I'm Juliette Littman. And I'm David Jacoby. We generally like to have fun and laugh on this podcast, but sometimes actual real world intervenes. And we're super sad today that uh, Deanne Brown passed away. We're dedicating this episode to her. She brought a lot of joy to us. Yeah, I just loved watching her. So thinking of her family, and we're super sad. But uh, let's shift gears and mm-hmm. talk about uh, Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules is back. Now, the second episode of Vanderpump Rules wasn't that good, but a mediocre episode of Vanderpump Rules is better than, than like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It was certainly better than the second episode of Euros of Hollywood. Like, yeah. Euros Lur- like totally dropped off. Like, obviously, I'm going to keep watching it, but Vanderpump, I was like, great, let's do it, Jack. Do you want to go get pizza? Let's go get pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I found that my T-SOP, you know, time spent on phone during, uh-huh. during, um, Euros of Hollywood was like 80%. You are to TSOP as uh, Nate Silver is to Pakoda. <laughs> yeah. You're and in... like Jay Adonde to Podium Game. Like I'm really yeah. pushing TSOP. <laughs> like, I, it's like the second someone else uses the term TSOP, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so happy. You're, yeah, it's like you've won. So yeah, so this week the main points of Vanderpump were following up on the fight. Which was great. Yeah, it, although you pointed out that it kind of edited it weirdly. Really weirdly. We didn't get to see the fight. Because... You know, I used to be a camera operator. I know how these things work. They have a good shot of the start of the fight. Yeah. And then the fight starts, and they immediately cut away from it. Why why is that? Are they protecting someone? Like... Glad you asked. None of the stuff that we prepare is ever any good. Yeah. (laughs) I think this is my theory, and I did go zap rooter on this. I think someone bumped into the cameraman was the only thing I can think of. Oh, A fight starts and people are hustling and busting to go break it up or whatever, because that's the only reason you would cut away from a good shot of a fight. Right. Particularly those people, they're like really scrapping it up. Tom was like injured. (laughs) Did you see that? Yeah, Tom was Tom was messed up. (laughs) That was hilarious. I I kind of like I'm glad he's on the show, but I definitely the um. What's the name of Kristen's boyfriend, the 22-year-old? James. James, the 22-year-old Audi selfie or Beamer selfie. Beamer like, selfie boy. Beamer selfie boy. He's so annoying. Like, it, 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 not that I'm that much older than him. I'm just like, oh, you're such a 22-year-old. Like, pull it together. I just love the idea. Like, when they, when, like, um, when, when Lisa held her, like, you know, State of the Union Vanderpump meeting. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? When she held that meeting, it was like, well, what happened? It's like, I started making fun of his car, and he started making fun of my car. <laughs> it's just like, this is so ridiculous. Like, this show could not be more, like, bad Los Angeles. I know. It started over a car thing. Go take a Beamer selfie, and the guy's like, oh, why don't you go take a Toyota Corolla selfie? Some people, I mean, I don't know anything about cars, and, like, they don't have, like, a lot of, like, value to yeah, me, except to, like, yes, get exactly. from, like, point yeah, A to point yeah, B. Yeah, totally the but same. But I guess, like, some people really care. Like, I some don't know. Some people know stuff about other people's cars. Like, oh, that's got a great engine like a v8 yeah. right i'm like why do you know something about someone else's car i literally don't know anything about cars like my, you could tell me like anything like oh your car has x y and z and i'd be like okay i know nothing cool. about my car um you know how like you're just like it's really easy to like pump air into your tires and like when the check air light goes on like you can just yes. take care of it yourself well i can't i have to like bring my car somewhere to get them to take care of I, it I, my wife called she's like i can't drive anywhere i pulled over on the side of the road i'm like why she's like the check air tire light is on <laughs> I'm like joey like, you can drive to a gas station then she called back in 20 minutes like i figured it out <laughs> She's really proud. She's like, well, I figured it out. good for her. Yeah. I have not figured it out. You can figure it out too, Juliet I Littman. I tried. I just could never do it. Anyway, back to the show. So you then, don't want to stay on the pumping tires thing? Um, I mean, I like tangents, but you don't. So I was just. Yeah, try- I don't like tangents. I was just trying to defer to you, to be honest. Please, please. <laughs> trying to carry my weight as your partner here. You're um, hosting this. Um. So yeah, so then Tom gets like really injured, and we get to see him show off one of his greatest skills, which is applying makeup. He was... He was so good at it. It's like he might be a makeup artist in his spare time. We don't know. And the, but then he's like, oh yeah, like, and then he sort of like chalked it up to like, well, good thing I did so many years modeling, which made me think of a couple things. One, like, I'm, are you a model? You know what I mean? I think he just wants us to know that he was a model, or like, I've never be modeled before. I know that. I know you find that hard you to haven't? believe. I know. That, I know you find that really what? hard to believe. But I don't think that applying makeup is like your job when you're a model. Don't no, you just like does it for you. do cocaine and like eat snacks or something and like look pretty? I don't think you eat snacks, but you do do cocaine. Okay, good. Yes, I think you have to do cocaine to be a model. It's part of it. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't think you apply your own makeup. I mean, I have watched The Hills, where you know Lauren and Whitney used to like work with models. Oh, I was gonna say. I was like, I don't think they're models. No, but they would like be at like a uh, fashion shows, photo shoots and like you have people there to do that for you i'm throwing this out there tom has i'm gonna call it recreational makeup he's worn recreational <laughs> makeup before absolutely he's definitely Someone done yeah who shaves his forehead as a recreational There's no makeup, makeup wear. Wear. yeah he's definitely woken up one day and like had bags under his eyes and was like oh don't worry i'll just take care of what's that. he done more cocaine as a model or worn makeup <laughs> I think he's, he's probably like mixed cocaine with makeup and sniffed it. <laughs> a little blush powder. Yeah, exactly. A little why, white powder. Why not? Let's, Let's go. Let's do some rails. What a night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 
Ariana was like really impressed with his makeup ability. I'm gonna throw out some shots. Are you ready? 24 second shot clock. Ariana is too good for Tom. Like, I don't even think she's that cool, but she's obviously one of the cooler girls on this show, and I don't know what she's doing with Tom. I'm sorry, Tom, but I just don't find you appealing on any level whatsoever. I don't know why you get to keep your job and James had to go. I mean, maybe it's just like legacy. He's been there for longer, but I just feel like Tom Three, is like really overrated. Two, one. I don't understand their relationship at all because Ariana has not shown me a single thing about her. She's never said anything really dumb or like been super superficial. She's like seems as regular as they come for this television program. Which is like kind of like a compliment. And how could you possibly date Tom? I, I went deep on this because really? they had they had um, Tom and Ariana on uh, oh, Watch, Watch What Happens, Happens Live. Did how you watch it? No, how was it? First of all, homeboy. <sighs> Take a breath. You he can do is it. the fucking worst. Whoa! He is the worst. Andy Cohen turned on him. Really? Like twice during the show, Andy Cohen like interrupted him and was like really rude. And he like kind of apologized one time. Tom shows up dressed like Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy in that like Batman from a million so years wearing ago. Wearing makeup? Yes, exactly. <laughs> wearing, I'm sure he had a lot of makeup on. And he had this like green suit with like patterns on it and ridiculous like like boot shoes. He just looked like like a, like a crazy person. And he had this attitude, this like, he acted like like a, a douchebag superstar actor. Really? Yeah, it was Ugh. like he was really famous and he was like too big for the whole thing and like- It's like when, Andy Cohen made you, buddy. Exactly, it's like kiss up to Andy Cohen. Yeah. You have to, and Andy Cohen's and just there his, to have a good time. And you're on his show, you're why a are guest. You, like, why are you making Andy Cohen turn on you? And they did this thing which I find really annoying. Him and Ariana did the like, like let's kiss. They kissed like three times over the course of a half an hour. You know what I mean? Hey, things are falling apart in the studio. This is amazing, I love it. <laughs> You that, love chaos. That was great. That was perfect. <laughs> so Tom, he's on the show, and Andy Cohen turned on him, and Ariana and him like kissed. They did the whole like like the, some caller would call with a long winded question, and they would just like re, like lean over uh, and kiss each other. That's really annoying. And you don't need that's to do that. That's not a couple you want to hang out you're with. You're filming a television show. Yeah, seriously. So like, what did Andy Cohen get mad at him about? Like, I don't remember specifically, like, being too long-winded with his answers, yeah. you know what I mean? And kind of, like, getting it, like, kind of, like, on his soapbox. And, like, Andy Cohen's not going to just hand over the show to Tom Sandoval. Right. You know what I mean? So he so he had to rein it back not in. handing anything over to Tom Sandoval. Yeah, like, seriously. Nothing. Not even pour me a drink. Yeah. So he was rude to Andy. Interesting. I'm going to go back and watch it. I noticed that Bravo has been putting those online now, which is huge for me. Oh. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Those are good. Yeah, because it's a short, like, 22 minutes. I should be recording all of them. I don't know why I'm not. I'm like, I don't want like a messy DVR. That's probably why. But uh, anyway, but they're still together, right? They're like, a, they're, they're very much still together. I think she's too good for him. Based on very, only based on the fact that he, I just can't stand him. I feel like his worth is really overinflated. Well, it drags her down. For like sure. like her like David Jacoby stock price plummeted after this Andy Cohen thing because like it says something about you if the closest person to you is this guy yeah. Tom you've made a bad choice you're surrounding yourself with no you're a bad person that's true that too if you're like I want to spend all my time with this bad person you're probably a bad person not only I love Kristen but I, and she cheated but I really just don't support cheating like they they hooked up while Tom was in a relationship like that's not cool yeah Kristen. Remember how everyone talks about how beautiful Nani is, but I don't yeah. see it. But I take it like, like, okay, well, everyone says it, so it Must has to be, be true. true. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like I'll you say know. it enough times, it becomes a fact. It's the same thing with Kristen. Like everybody hates Kristen. Everybody talks about how crazy she is, but like I don't really see it. Um, why do they hate her? I think, I mean, I think she probably is just really insecure, and like mm. that's the kind of thing that like I feel like people prey on. Like when they can tell that you are insecure, they just kind of like go for it. It becomes like a target. So maybe that's part of it. I don't, I think that she. I mean, she's obviously stirring stuff up. Like by tracking down the girl in Miami or whatever. So, like, that's pretty uncool. It is, she is uncool. And on the but, Andy Cohen But on thing, the other hand, for us, as viewers, without Kristen, what would our storyline be this there's season? There's nothing. Like, yeah. on the Andy Cohen thing, one of the callers called in the or, or tweet or whatever the hell it was. Somebody asked the question, like, uh, Tom, uh, why is your place so messy? Oh, my God. So messy. Disgusting. So messy. It was, like, a messy for, like, a college dorm room messy. It was beyond. I mean, I am, I just want to say, I'm messy. I know that I am. I would never, ever live in that filth. Ever. I didn't know you were messy. That's disgusting. I don't like messy. But I'm going to say this is they had a couch, and then next to the couch, they have like one of those foam love seats that's like doesn't have any like wood structure to it. It's like a big piece of foam. It's like something you would put a Big Mac in. It's so disgusting. And they put like a sheet over it. So someone asked the question, they're like, hey, Tom, like you're a mess. Like what's going on with your place? And his response was like, well, I had a roommate at the Tom, the time, and that roommate would go out at all hours, and like who knows when they would come back. I'm like, that's not an excuse. Like if the roommate's gone all the time, they clean 
clean up after him. Was roommate was not Kristen? Was that like supposed to be about? No, Kristen? it wasn't about Kristen. Oh, so that's a two bedroom. I guess. I'm confused because that's where Kristen and Tom lived. It, there it looked too. like you could take the shades of the window and like write your name in it with your fingertip. Yeah, like that's disgusting. how gross it was. It was, it was disgusting. I think even worse than that was the kitchen, like just filled with dirt. Like every surface and in the sink was filled with dirty dishes. It's disgusting. It was filthy. It was. He needs a maid. Or to clean it up himself. Clean it up himself is probably preferable. It was disgusting. So when you say, like, what are the storylines, like, without Kristen, we don't have much. And you can see that Jax is approaching the season, and he's like, huh, like, what's going to be my thing? Because Jax is about Jax, and he wants Jax to get as much Jax air times as Jax can get. So he's like, what's going to be my thing? I'm going to date two girls and then break up with one. Jax on Jax on Jax. Jax on Jax on Jax on Jax on Jax. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> it's great. I'm all for it. Yeah, so Carmen seemed like a pretty cool chick. That's the one he broke up with. Mm -hmm. He was she was like, you're 35 years old. What are you doing? Like, and she didn't they hang out the night before? What was her issue? Yeah. Oh, he said he loved her. Okay, well, he first of all got her name tattooed in the exact same spot, basically, where he got Stassi's that, name tattooed. That doesn't mean much, though. He gets everyone's name tattooed. If he, when he goes to Starbucks, the barista is like, what's your name? Tiffany? Cool. I'll be right back. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that reminds me. Did you see that Chandler Parsons Starbucks thing this week? We'll go, we'll go, we'll go non-reality news with Chandler Parsons. We, I think we should just have a Chandler Parsons let's segment. Let's do 20 seconds of Chandler right now. We should now. do this week in Chandler Parsons every week on the show. I will save it for the end. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Jax will get anyone's name tattooed, but you know what? He should maybe, like, this could be a business opportunity for him. He's always looking to, like, expand his brand. Like, you could um, get, like, just uh, temporary tattoos of girls' names and, like, test it out for a week. Give it a, see give it a you, look. See how you feel about it before fully committing, and then maybe he could use it himself. The biggest takeaway from Jax his breakup wasn't that it was entertaining wasn't that it was a good storyline wasn't it was completely fake and they like i don't like the thing where you break up with somebody and then they tell you off it's like well if i didn't break up with you you'd still be in love with me so i know you how bad can i really be seriously and it was i live in los angeles you know and it spent like 14 years in new york before i came out here and there was one thing about that breakup that really stuck out to me is that a pizza place that was quality pizza <laughs> That was they, thin crust, crispy pizza. They did not fold it, but it was like real good pizza. Question about the folding. The folding, I think, is really a function of standing while eating pizza. Mm. If you're sitting, do you still fold it? Depends on the on the a couple things. The consistency of the dough mm. and the size of the slice. Yeah. Like if it's if it's a small, small slice, yeah, you then fold. you can't really fold it. But the trick to folding is you have to get napkins to gather up at the crease in the crust, or else that grease will All drip your onto hands. your clothes yeah. in your hand. Uh, have you ever been to Coronet Pizza in New York? No. They had the hugest, most gigantic slices that you obviously had to do that for. Yeah. Whatever, you haven't been, so who cares? I'm going to Jax's breakup place. I want I want to date Jax just so we can break up with me because that pizza looks delicious. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but that was good publicity for them. It was great. An interesting, interesting location for a breakup. I think I support it. It's kind of like, it's, it sends the right message from the jump. Like, I'm not spending a lot of money. This is not formal. This here's, is going to be quick. Here's how you know it's for TV. Jax is the type of guy that breaks up over text. Oh, my God, definitely. He is. Good Jackson, call. He doesn't do face-to-face -face breakups. Good he doesn't call. care. He, he's, he slept with his best friend's girl. Like, he doesn't care about formalities and being nice to people. He doesn't care. One thing about so much Jax is I'm realizing Stassi's really marginalized. We barely had any Stassi last night. Well, here's the thing. It's like, what, where, what happens with Stassi's story this season? I know. Where does it go? Because She has to take a job with Lisa, right? I just want to say, we, th we um, thought, and I think it's true, that they were thinking about doing like a pilot, her own show, like a spinoff with her. And I didn't get picked up, obviously, because she doesn't have another show. Yeah. So like maybe she can't really really support her own storylines or something. I don't know how they're going to keep her on the periphery. Like, I don't know what they're going to do with Stassi, she but they have to have been, do something. She should have been, like, the hostess at Sir or something like that. Like, some kind of managerial. Well, I mean, or sorry, she should, at, 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 at Pump. Pump yeah. yeah. I want to go to Pump. It looks fun. It looks lovely. It looks amazing. I would, it's, it looks like a really good day drinking spot. Like, like Saturday yeah. at, like, 2 o'clock, you go down and be like, I'll just take a shot of Patron and yeah. a margarita. Thank it you looks, very much. It looks lovely. And, she, you know, she handpicked the staff to show you a good time. Have, yeah. You're going to have fun. They've got a VIP section you can have sex in. Yeah, they, I didn't even notice that actually. No, they said they like like this is the VIP section, and like the guy she was showing around was like, "Can we have sex in there?" Oh. She's like, "Of course, everything's hey, sexy." Hey, Did hey, you see hey. that when they were going over the 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 menu? Yeah. It was like every single dish had to be some sort of like sexual entendre. I think she's she's appealing to a sexually charged crowd. Like she kept referencing how it was like in Boys Town and stuff, and like mm -hmm. for going out, for hitting the town or something. If you're if you're looking looking for, for fun fun times. <laughs> Lots snapping vibes. on today's pod. Lots snapping. snapping. Lots Snappy of pod. Good. Uh, Snappy pod. We don't have a lot of time. We gotta keep moving. All right. So should we move on to Top Chef? Are you done with Vanderpump? Anything else you want to hit? Nah. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Go. My favorite moment was when Katie 
followed Lisa outside of the restaurant to talk to her about giving Tom Schwartz a job. She's yeah. Like, Lisa, do you think annoying your boss that she's late for something is like the best tactic? Walking to, can you walk between Stern and Pump that easily? I don't think so. I think she's probably walking, walking to her, to her car. car. Okay, also, yeah. Lisa doesn't confused. wear walking shoes. Like, I don't think she walks Yeah, anywhere. yeah. Lisa, Lisa hasn't walked for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. She, if she's walking, it's like on a treadmill. I love when you wrote down the rundown that I just noticed about Stassi. Come on, read it. Stassi, she's wearing the same jacket as she wore to our office. The white jacket. Yeah, that trench coat. And hard, we, to, hard to keep a, keep a white trench clean for We had a conversation know. about the trench coat, so that I very clearly remember it. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, well, we, were, we were talking about it, and you know it was a balmy, humid day, and Stassi kind of brought the New York Thunder with her trench coat. It's a good coat. She you can tell that was probably early on, and she really wanted to wear that one. Oh, my God. I bought a trench coat like a year and a half ago here in L.A., like hoping I'd get a chance to wear Why? it. I haven't worn it once. Why would you buy a trench coat? Because I just think it's like flattering, and I like trench coats, but I haven't had the chance to wear it. I'm not a trench coat fan. Really? Nah. Oh, I love them. I think it's like a sophisticated, cool look. Mm -mm. Okay. For men and women, you're against it? I'm out. I'm out on trench coats. Any kind of rain jacket for you? You like a functional thing? Like to a North, North Facey? Face. Yeah. yeah. Like I like functional functional performance gear. I had a very big North Face phase in high school when I was Everybody did. It was called 1994, 95, 96. Oh. Everyone. North Face was like the shit. And they, everything cost like $300. Like yeah. remember those like fancy tech, tech, tech gear? Yeah. I remember getting one for Hanukkah when I was in ninth grade. Yeah. And then I also had a North you Face backpack. You wore it every backpack. single day, right? Every single day for like yeah. four it's to like, five yeah, years. Like into June. Yeah. yeah. And then I, <laughs> yeah. I had a, a blue North Face backpack to match. Like I was like so North Faced out. It was ridiculous. The only North Face thing I could afford was the vest, so I had the vest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, there I have a great North Face outlet at Woodbury Commons. Did you ever go there? It's where I got a lot of my North Face. No. Yeah. No. Did you know they make special stuff for outlets? Yeah. I didn't know that. J. Crew, Gap. Yeah. yeah so Factory. they make like like it's like oh this is cheaper. It's like well it's cheaper because it's worse. Yeah. Like at the factory, they're like, okay, this is the stuff for the J. Crew store, and this is the stuff for the for the J. Outlet. Crew factory is so successful, you can buy it online now too. They used to yeah, have it only now. I want, now I know why my pants don't fit right. I'm like, oh, I got a twenty dollar pair of pants. Yeah, it's like, guess what good. they fit like? A twenty dollar pair of pants. Yeah, they're not as good. But J. Crew factory used to be only on the weekends. Like you could order online from Saturdays, uh, Friday, Saturday. How Sunday. do you know this much about J. Crew? I, I had a big J. Crew phase in high school too. Okay. <laughs> okay. What other phases did you go through? Patagonia phase? Did you have one of those? No, I didn't. Patagonia is very right now, actually. Like, it is. Yes, it's very popular. Wait, Silicon Patagonia Valley. is on trend? Yes, it is. In wait, wait, wait. Silicon Valley does not make fashion decisions for the world, okay? It's not like, oh, it's not like Milan. Like, oh, did you hear Did you hear about Men's Fashion Week in Silicon Valley? <laughs> Patagonia is really in. Have you heard about Patagucci? That's like what they call it up there in Nor NorCal. Are you lying? No, I swear. You're this lying. Is, this is real. Google, I don't believe you. Google Patagucci after this podcast. How about this? No. Okay, fine. Don't <laughs> choose to not believe me and therefore be wrong. That's your prerogative. Let's talk about Top Chef. Let's talk about Top Chef. <laughs> I haven't watched a season of Top Chef for like eight seasons. I never stopped. I've been watching this whole time. One of my closest friends, shout out to Zoe, she worked on Top Chef this season and she's been working on it. She's like part I of the, see her name the, in the, credits. the Top Chef crew. And I was like, oh, look, I got to go in on this now. And I love it. I'm back in on Top Chef. Why did I ever leave? It's a great, great show. This is why it's great. The people on it, are even though they're not all super talented, they're all legitimately talented. Like, they're talented. Like, they're talented. You have they're like they're the show has a certain amount of pride. And did you see the commercials they have where they're both like a hundred new restaurants have been open since the show started? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like they are proud of that. Like they're committed to quality. Also they don't really show this to you, and I wish they showed it more. It's like Padma knows a lot about food herself. She's not just a host. She's written a couple books yeah, and stuff. Yeah, she's cookbooks and stuff. She like, I wish they she's would. She's also the most beautiful woman in the world. She's incredibly <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. She also was married to Salman Rushdie. Did yeah. you know that? That's yes, I did. Of course I did. I did. Just to be a fly on the wall at like a you know a conversation. What was that wedding people? like? Oh well, my yeah. god. There's a fatwa against that guy. <laughs> this is, this is amazing. Um, I didn't know we were gonna use fatwa on this podcast. <laughs> Well, well done. There it was. Well done. Um, she's a. I wish they actually would let her talk more about food, but they give that time to like the yeah, experts or whatever. You know, the people that are paid to talk well, about yeah, food. But yeah, like once, but once. So she's like a legit host. I love Tom. Like I've had a, a Tom thing for quite some time. Have you been to Craft? Are you kidding? Of course. So good. Yeah. Have you been to Witchcraft too? The sandwich yes. spot. Witchcraft is really good. Craft is right next to that movie theater on Union Square. Yeah. And like Craft in a movie. So the good. Best. What yeah. I saw Drag Me to Hell and then went to Craft. I was like, this is the best night I've ever had in my That's life. That's awesome. I saw yeah. Old School at that movie theater. I think that predates Craft, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. but uh, he also used to work at the Gramercy Tavern. Like, he's a, he's awesome. I mean, I love yeah. Tom. I think he's like, I like that he's like really firm. He's gotten more fun. I like his criticism, too. Totally. And he's really honest. Also, he, I think like it would be bad for his brand if he didn't, if he wasn't honest and like held his own standards on the show. So here's the part that's tricky. Let's say, because after we do a podcast, we like to talk about how bad it was when we're done. Yeah. So imagine if we finish this podcast and Tom walks in the room and he goes, 
do you think that was a good podcast? How do you answer? You know what I mean? Because if you mess up a dish, right? Yeah. Let's pretend that you're a contestant on Top Chef and you cooked um, steak and it was like really underdone, right? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm Tom and I say to you, how do you feel that your steak was cooked? What's the right way to answer? Would, do you stand behind your mistake or I'm do you admit you asked, your mistake? I'm glad you asked. I was thinking about this because that one woman, they were like, did you think that was good? And she was like, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It's her, like you're supposed to- Her beets dish. Yeah, what are you supposed to do in that scenario? I think you stand by your dish. I think I think you have to stand by it. But then Unless, you kind of look like you don't know what you're talking about because you just undercooked some steak and I'm asking you if you thought it was well done and you're like, yes, it was. I guess, but with that particular dish, Padma liked it and Tom didn't. So there was some disagreement or whatever. Mm -hmm. Undercooking a steak, I think you know if you messed it up or whatever, or if you didn't like let it rest. I don't know. Yeah, and also, remember when Aaron like knocked over the broth I or whatever? I am so glad he's gone. How did he make it to the top 10? But he's one of those guys that makes the show. I like know. he makes the show more easy. If Katsuji leaves next, it's like it's a wrap. Okay, so I haven't been to Mexico, sure, but it's here in Los Angeles, his restaurant, but I've wanted oh, to Oh, I thought go. you said I haven't been to Mexico, sure. Like no. I've been to Mexico. I'm like, what are you talking Mexico about? Mexico, sure, is his restaurant. Oh, okay. It's kosher Mexican food. Thank you. I, did you feel like you had to explain <laughs> that to me? That was the most insulting thing you've ever done. Well, what if someone wasn't familiar with it and they just heard me saying it and couldn't imagine how it was spelled? I thought you went to Mexico, so that's <laughs> nice. Um, he seems like a delightful human. It makes me want to go to his restaurant. Katsuji? Yeah. Seems like an asshole. Yeah, I think he seems fun. He does seem fun. He, he, he seems like a fun guy to talk to for like seven minutes. Yeah. Like, and, then move, and then move on to the party. Perfect for a restaurant because yeah. you're going to get a cumulative seven minutes with him yes, yes. from all of your interactions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that but would then, be great. What we have to talk about is the Michael Jordan of Top Chef. Gregory. It's like he's the Usain Bolt of Top it's, Chef. He, it's, he's so far in a way ahead of the competition that it is it makes for a weird dynamic that him and may like they did this kind of like schoolyard picking thing yeah where basically it's the opposite if you're still left it means no one wants to compete with you and him and may were there so it's kind of like the judges know you two are the best yeah the cast knows that you two are the best it's like kind of throws off the dynamic of the show because i know who's going to be in the finals right although the thing about top chef and they do punish you for it is like if you have one bad day you can be out because they always say like if you've one bad meal and the critic comes like that can kill your restaurant or whatever yeah, but I think like I think that's something they say, but they don't act on. Like I think Gregory gets credit for past work, time served. I'll call it. If he if he doesn't go to the finals, it will definitely be a it would be wrong or something. I don't know much about food, but again, like it's sort of like Nani being beautiful and Kristen being crazy. It's like uh, all you people that do know about food constantly are saying that Greg Greg's food is great. I want to try Greg's food. One thing about Top Chef is it's always like, why would I want to watch this? I can never taste the food after or make it myself. It totally doesn't matter. But now they all have restaurants too. I know. You can just go to their restaurants. And yeah. I, as you know, I've been to a lot of Top Chef restaurants. Yeah. Joey went to one, my wife, and she was just Inc. like, yeah, she hated so it. It was the worst. Yeah. That's, where, that's where May works at Inc. Yeah. Well, so. sorry, May. It's a, it's a wrap on you. I think that maybe she didn't like the menu, though, so it wasn't necessarily May's That's fault. She, she's got a great taste. She's like, look, I, when I go to a restaurant, I want to order what I want. Yeah. I don't want you guys to decide what I want because I want what I want. I don't want your stupid, like, you know, uh, uni mixed with basil yeah, leaves and wrapped too, in a bamboo shoot. It's like, what? too out there. Yeah. Um, they used to do for the past few seasons. You've probably missed it. They were doing Last Can Chance Kitchen, where the person who got voted yeah, off. It's like an Exile Island thing. Yeah. yeah. Could that, and then so. Two or three seasons ago, the person who won Last Chance Kitchen came back and ended up winning the whole show, mm. and a lot of people hated that. Although she ended, she was a very good chef. It was, um, what was her name? Like Kristen or something? She was, she was from Boston. She was very talented. She like went out too soon, but it was yeah. like someone who you wasn't on the show won the show, which was kind of I annoying. Kind of cool. Ah, I wasn't into it. It made, it made me mad because I was like, I'm not watching Top Chef extras. Like I, you know, I'm I like the show, but I'm not watching. Last I'm not week. going there either. Yeah. So like, I just want people. I want the people who I see on TV to be in the finale. So it was kind of annoying. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a solid show. I was thinking, it's like one of the. That's probably the, the other than Survivor, one of the most reputable reality shows to go on. I would say the Project Runway is more impressive to me because like you can cook a meal in 20 minutes. Yeah. But these people are like, I know, they're like they doing up. designer gowns in like an hour. I know. It's like, true. I don't even know how clothes work. Like that. Might might be easy, but it seems really difficult. No, it's and also they use like weird materials. Like, yeah, really they're, they're like, oh, now we're gonna go to the you know the, the plant nursery and pick out some plants and make a like a design a couture gown out of it. It looks pretty good. Those shows are also like the spurs of reality TV. Totally. Where it's like the franchise is more important than the pieces, and they're like they've sustained like you know like I can't tell you anyone who's been on on Project Runway in the last like. That's the thing, and that's why it's a testament to the producers. Like yeah. the producers make the, some shows are cast shows and some shows are producer shows, yeah. and like that's a producer show. The it, format yeah. is what carries it. And that's when Top Chef is not good because they like they make weird production choices. Has anyone noticed in the past like fucking decade that Heidi Klum is not a good host? <laughs> 
Does anyone notice that? I guess it doesn't matter. Like the stuff in the workroom with Tim Gunn. Tim is so Gunn much is more killing important. it. Yeah, yeah, but they like if if I, I think if next season Heidi Klum just like wasn't available, like I think everyone would notice that she's absolutely worthless. Yeah, maybe. I guess. Tim Gunn. He means she's that. sticking around. I love Tim Gunn. I love Tim Gunn too. Who doesn't? Should we go to our taste test? It's Speaking of models. Yeah, right off the top. What models? I was going off a of top chef. Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Project Runway. Models, they don't speaking eat. Of, so we're speaking eat. of transitions. Speaking of speaking of transitions, let's transition. <laughs> into taste, taste test. Taste test. So you went popcorn this week. Yeah. You, went on your, you went rogue. I wasn't part of the, the, uh, the creative decision that was made, and I'm not upset with it. Let me tell you how this happened. I went to the grocery store, and I was wandering in the aisles. I went to like the kind of the seasonal aisle, mm -hmm. and I found this one popcorn. That, let's start with it. All right. It is holiday cookie-flavored popcorn. And I was like, huh, that's it's, weird. So before you even try it. Describe the taste of holiday cookies. Um, like sugary, like sprinkles, I guess. I don't know. They don't really taste like anything. They're kind of just like sugar. <laughs> well, that's why it was kind of weird. Plus, like, they're just really pushing this right Let's now. Let's have it. Pour some on there. I love popcorn. I do, too. Who would have thought? You know what I mean? Like, who's the first person to heat up some corn and be like, whoa! I just want to say, <laughs> look I, at this I, thing. It turns and morphs into a completely different being, and it's more <laughs> delicious. Have you ever, I've never really like, made it on the stovetop, have you? Yeah. I never have. Oh. What? Just makes me think of Scream. I'm a pop. I'm a um, microwave girl. Really? Yeah. You know who would be very upset about that? Who? Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose does not like microwave popcorn. Really? Yeah. Too okay. Airy. Taste isn't that strong. Tastes like butter popcorn. It's bad. That doesn't taste good. If someone said you can have regular popcorn, or you can have this. It tastes like honestly, it tastes like someone like sprayed it with a spray bottle that had some flavor in it. It also tastes old. Feels like it's stale. Been I'm not into this. Been sitting around for too long. Bad popcorn. Holiday okay. cookie. Who made that holiday cookie? Gaslight Popcorn Company. Guess what, Gaslight Popcorn Company? Your popcorn tastes like crap. Made in California. Mm. Not the best thing California has to offer. Yeah. That would be the ocean. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you even talking about? The ocean is the best thing California has to offer? Absolutely. What do you think it is? The sunshine? I don't know, ma'am. Oh, shoot. Okay. Dreams. This this next one, Jax. We have Jax. Jax is the best thing California has to offer. <laughs> this next one is from um, 47, 479 Degrees, I guess what, is what it's called. Like, that's just a bad, like, Grantland is a bad name, but, like, 479 Degrees is really bad. So I, I know this brand because I fly JetBlue very frequently in between oh. New York and Los Angeles. Mm. And they had this in the, in the JetBlue terminal at JFK is off the chain. It I is incredible i'm flying jet blue home on wednesday like i might show up four hours before my flight just to hang out oh my god the there's, a, there's a familia pizza in there like that's a, the amazing best. it's about the first time i went there i had a flight to vegas and i was like am i already in vegas I know. <laughs> I was like, what happened also they've had free wi-fi for a long time which a lot of airports don't it's pretty good wi-fi i mean it's just it's a Phenomenal, phenomenal terminal. I'm gonna download some stuff when I get there. Yeah, go <laughs> so crazy. Excited. Let me try some of this. Okay, so this is toasted sesame and seaweed. Hmm. It's weird, but well, you know, okay. pour some out for you. Yeah, pour some out here. Oops, I have high hopes for this. I have high hopes for this. We'll toasted, toasted sesame and seaweed. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> this is disgusting. When I was a kid. I used to go to the front yard and eat grass. Like, I don't know why. I would just like, constantly be eating grass. That's that's what this tastes like. This is so bad. I, I like almost always on our taste test, even when I don't like it, I have a second filling. I'm hungry because I had a salad for lunch, but I don't even want to eat this. This is disgusting. I, it tastes like gasoline. It's disgusting. One thing or I it like, tastes like rubber. It tastes like a tire. Every time we do a taste test, there's actually two taste tests. One happens inside the podcast room with microphones. The other happens when we bring back the stuff from the taste test and put it in the Grantland office. I guarantee this toasted pop. No one's this touching toasted, this. No one's touching this for like a month. This is disgusting. This is this is as disgusting as the bad salsa. I'm wow, out. that I'm was out bad. on that. That was awful. Who made that? 479 degrees. You know what? I'm changing my flight. I'm not going to jet. I'm not. They going have some jet good blue. stuff though. Usually, they have, their salted mm. caramel one is pretty good. I just wonder how does that get, like you know like how does that happen? Like how does someone did try someone, that? This is like on Top Chef. Did you not taste it before I went Seriously, out? Seriously, did you have a focus group? Did you get somebody to come in and try it? Did, did like does anyone have, have taste buds taste at enough. this company? I want to say I think that's the most disgusting thing we've tasted on this podcast. It's really bad. It's really disgusting. I'm having a. Can you explain coffee. to me why I want to have another bite though? <laughs> just it's just the psychology it's, doesn't make it's sense. Almost like you're forgetting how bad it is and you don't want to It looks forget. good. It looks it's like, tasty. It's like holding on to a memory for lo as long as possible. 
It was really bad. Let's keep it moving. Okay. I need something new. Last one. We got some reality Oh, my TV. God. Reality TV tie-in here. This is oh my God. Skinny Girl, White Cheddar Chipotle. From, so, Bethany. Keep getting them checks, Bethany. Seriously, like, what do you think her residual is on this bag of popcorn? Like, 10 cents? Less. One cent? Uh, less. <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm in on White Cheddar Chipotle. I'm also in on this uh, resealable opening freshness bag they I got I completely there. agree, because I'm having an issue with the other bags. I could tell. <laughs> so smart. I didn't know how you tried pouring it out, and it was going all over the place. <laughs> Can only do so much at a time, Jacob. All right, let's try it. White Cheddar Chipotle. The real like, another thing is like when you're developing the flavor, it's like, do you know what's good? Cheddar. White cheddar. Yeah. You don't have to add another thing. It's like katsuji. I know. Too many ingredients. Too much. Too much. Too many ingredients. I will, I'm wondering how much chipotle taste we're really gonna get here. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going in. I'm gonna put in like five kernels in my mouth. You wanna know what? They found out a way to make found a way to make white cheddar not that good. <laughs> this was an offer. This so is that's not all the popcorn we have, right? Yeah. Guess what? Here's what we learned. Butter and salt works on popcorn. Smart food popcorn. Stick to Smart that. food popcorn. There you go. Okay. Well, I'm still reeling from the disgusting sesame, uh, what was that? Seaweed? Sesame seaweed. That was, that was disgusting. disgusting. It's awful. Would you say it was worse than the worst salsa? Probably. Do you, I'm going to make an announcement. The only reason I'm making the announcement is because if I say it on this podcast, then we'll actually have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to say, right? Yeah. Tell, tell the people. We're going to spin off the taste test podcast. Spin off alert! This, this is will, cheers. This will be the Joey to our friends. <laughs> the, ta the Taste Test Podcast, we're taking it out of the reality TV podcast. It's going to be its own living thing, and we're going to hope to book some Taste Test guests. Yeah, it's it's the road to our Mary Tyler Moore is what you meant to say, and I'm super excited about it. It's going to be good. I'm really excited, too. But the only reason I'm saying it because now we have to actually do it because we're going to talk about it for a couple weeks. Yeah, well, it'll probably be, I'm, I'm going to go with the 2015 launch. What do you think? Early 2015. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see, right, right around Bachelor time. I'll put it in my Disney goals. <laughs> Me too. Uh, uh, we watch. We watch it. Let's start with what we're both watching. 90 Day Fiance. So you told me this was good. My wife told me it was good. I didn't watch it. And then I sat down and watched it. I was like, this is good. I can't look away. It's like, I just like, it's transfixing. I'm obsessed with these people. And like, there's so many things that don't make sense. If you're not watching this show, you need to watch the show. Who's your favorite couple? Fa favorite is very Yeah, loosely. I was like, favorite doesn't make any sense. My favorite couple Which is couple Muhammad mean? from Tunisia <laughs> and this woman who's like 30 name. years older than him and really not attractive. And they've got the weirdest chemistry and it, it and almost has, feels like misery. Like she's got them like locked up in her basement. She also has like three um, offbeat children. Like they're just like, actually four. There's the older son who like, did you see the episode where the son like vetted him? They like played pool together. No. And the son was like, I'm worried that you're just using my mom. Yeah. Uh, he should just be like, I am using your mom. What the hell do you think I'm doing here? Muhammad's like 26 and his fiance is like, f like do you 56. Do you know about this law? Like, I don't know how this works. The K-1 visa? Yeah. So Explain it. <laughs> the, I don't know that much. I only know they tell you the beginning right. of the show. That's why I'm show. asking you to explain it because I can't do this. There's a K-1 visa, which allows you, if you're in a relationship, to come over to America, and then you have to get married within 90 within days. Within 90 days. So the, the, the show tracks a bunch of couples, like a dozen couples. There's yeah. a lot of them. And in this 90-day, like, feeling it out period to see whether or not they get married. I would say the success rate of the couples I've seen is going to be mm, right around zero. So this is season two. And previous season, there was like three or four lasting couples. Lasting. They're still around. So they've, they've been together for a year. a year. Is that what lasting is nowadays? <laughs> With these couples, it is. Yeah. And the, the most inexplicable couple. To, I mean, like, all these couples are inexplicable unless you just go for using you for the green card. Like, that's the only thing that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, of course. Sense. But the couple to me that makes the least sense is Chelsea and her Nicaraguan fiat. Nicara y Yadmir? Yadmir, yeah. yeah. Because Yadmir is a pop star in his home country of Nicaragua. And now he's in Ohio. Very very successful pop star. Like, he's the one direction of Nicaragua. Stay in Nicaragua. Chelsea, move to Nicaragua. Move to Nicaragua. You speak Spanish. Yeah. He doesn't speak English. Yeah, he doesn't. What the what the F is she doing? I've been in Nicaragua. It's amazing yeah. there. But apparently it's it's really, really beautiful. beautiful. It doesn't make any sense. Why did he agree? I don't Why, if she understand it. Also, it's like if you really loved Yamir, you would move to Nicaragua. I'm sorry. He's a pop star. It's you, a basically like if that's you wanted, the best job in the world you can get. If you wanted to be rich, you would move to Nicaragua. This here's the thing: is when you when you get to Nicaragua, you're automatically rich. Yeah. The second I got off the plane, I was like, well, I'm now rich. 
It, uh, it, it's completely inexplicable. It's an amazing place to visit. I cannot recommend Nicaragua. I would like enough. to go. I've heard it's cool. It's 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 it, what it's like what Costa Rica was twenty years ago before I turned into like a tourist. That's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go and go to the band of go to the concert of your mirror's band. It's like he's literally the Harry Styles in Nicaragua. So why, why would he give that up? He, yeah, it's I like don't. it doesn't make. Any sense. And like, then, none it, of the couples make sense. Look, I, get, I understand if you're ambitious. You're like, all right, I'm, I am the Harry Styles of Nicaragua, so I now want to. Like, like a, okay, I'm moving a, to Leona. New York. Like, I'm moving to Los Angeles. I'm trying now. I'm going to take over this market. Yeah. But instead, he's in, like, Podunk, Ohio, and he doesn't even want to play music. He's, like, rural. And they were like, what job are they talking about him getting? It was something oh, like Oh, no. His, his, this was one of the worst things that was said. His mother was like, oh, there's, like, a. Her mother. A, yeah. Her mother, like, when he moved over, and she's, like, at the table, the four of them were having dinner, and she's yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, there's a factory down the road. Yeah. And they hire a lot of Latinos. I was, oh my God. Oh, it was just so bad. So bad. It's also just like. So bad. So upsetting on so many levels. Yeah. Like, it, like honestly, like I could do a, a top 10 list of why that was disturbing. Seriously, it's so offensive. And then there was another couple, Daya, is that her? Yeah, Daya and Brett, who are in Washington, like outside of Tacoma. Yeah. They've gotten like four or five episodes out of Daya accusing Brett of buying her a fake diamond ring. Like literally that's been their plot for they like went, five weeks. They, and then she said, I don't want to embarrass you. That's why we're going to the jeweler yeah. to make sure that the diamond you bought I'm me is real. I'm worried about your reputation. I'm worried about your reputation. It's like, do you know what? You know we're being followed by cameras, right? And you're accusing me of buying you a fake ring and now you're worried about my reputation? Um, a shocking thing about Brett is that he's already been married once and he has a child. Like, I don't know why he thought this was like a, the solution to like his love problems or something. We got to move on, but there's one more couple I want to touch on. Okay. The Brazilian young lady who's oh, yeah. pretty hot and like 24 Cassia? whatever. Cassia? Cassia, dating some normal dude in America. Normal. Nor just Use like loosely. Normal. Yeah, exactly. So I don't even in like, Florida. I don't like to drive my best friend to the airport in uh, in Los Angeles. Yeah. Right? It's like, that's just too far out of the way, too much work, takes too much time. Homeboy got on a plane, flew to Brazil. Hey, you're underselling it from the beginning. To pick her up. Jacoby. His dad drove him to Tampa. From Tampa, he took a six-hour bus ride to Miami. From Miami, he flew to Brazil. Not even sure she was going to be gonna there. She was going to be there. But, like, can't you just buy her a ticket, and then she gets on the plane and flies to America? Yeah, it's insane. You don't need to escort her. Insane. The whole thing. She, the whole thing's insane. And then she, like, she wants to be a model. So, like, her... Her Here's motivations are transparent. She is going to be a model, but she's going to be the type of model that ends up on the back of a motorcycle in a thong. <laughs> like, she's going to be a model. Thong, da thong, thong, thong. She's, she's going to be a model, but she's going to be a certain type of model that she's not exactly going to be a ho ho not, not the kind she wants We're to running be. out of time. we got to move on. Okay, next. Um, Survivor, announcement. You have an announcement. I have completely stopped watching Survivor. I'm not even DVRing it. You canceled your season pass? I never got picked up. It's because my DVR never picked it up, and I never bothered to set it. Oh my God! I know. I don't know who I am anymore. It's like I've lost my true north. I don't. I don't know what to do. Well, here's. Let me catch you up. John Rucker's girlfriend. They had the merge feast, uh -huh. and she tucked away a little trail mix into her little pouch. Ooh. Yeah. Did she so, get found out? She got found out. Everyone else was sharing their stuff. So then they found her trail mix, and then and then she was like, Jeff, I have to talk to you. She went and talked to Jeff and quit. She oh quit God. because they found her trail mix. She didn't want to face the trail mix music, so she left. Sounds like perfect for John Rocker. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I, it's still going. It's not good, but it's going, and I'm still going to watch it. What's just, next just for the show? Does it have a revival? Do they? I mean, it'll still be popular. The ratings will still be high for another like ten seasons, and it'll just disappear. Jeff Probst just is like Survivor. Like that's his life's legacy. He's getting that money though. Jeff Pro Jeff Probst has like a Survivor summer house. Yeah, <laughs> probably it's multiple. Um, do we have any news? Yeah, we got news. You got to move that disgusting popcorn uh, out of the way to I read it. I didn't even see it. Um, so Seth Rogen and James Franco are really going to be on Naked and Afraid. I love this. I'm like confused about it, though. I love Naked and Afraid. I, it's you your, know I love the show. It's your favorite show. It's my favorite show, and I love Seth Rogen and James Franco. I like them, too. I, I like James Franco. I like them both. Uh, but I'm just confused. Like They're like saying they didn't know they were going to get each other. That can't be true, right? What did you just ask me? Like, no, no, no. I want to make this clear. Seth Rogen and James Franco are on Naked and Afraid, and you're claiming that it's a coincidence that they got paired together? You know they always do a man and a woman, right? I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence. Like, you're like, wait, you're like, that can't be true, right? It's like, like Juliet, come on. But did they really do it for 21 days? Like, I'm just still confused about this. I love it. Naked and Afraid is real. I'm looking forward to watching it. It's going to be the best episode. They're yeah. going to be hilarious. TLC is like in Discovery, like having a moment. Kind of secretly crushing it. Yeah, they're really doing well. There are a lot of drama for TLC lately, the whole Honey Boo Boo thing. No, yeah. Let's not get into I'm it. I'm not following it.
Um, Jenny McCarthy and Donnie Wahlberg are getting their own show called Donnie Loves Jenny. The most interesting thing about this is when I brought it up before the pod, you said what? Um, that Donnie's family hates her, so he's like cast out of the family. No more Wahlburgers for yes. Donnie, huh? So, yeah, I guess not. Mark Wahlberg didn't go to the wedding. He like sent an Instagram message like the next day saying he couldn't go because of his daughter's birthday party. Okay. And um, I read some blind items. So this is unconfirmed. Rumor alert. Rumor. Rumor on blindgossip.com that um, his family doesn't like her and like th it's like a problem. Hmm. I like her because I was on Single Down once and she was great. <laughs> okay, cool. And last one. I don't really care about this, but I just thought I'd put it on anyway. Caroline Manzo may go back to Real Housewives in New Jersey because Teresa's leaving and they need a star. Controversial opinion alert. I don't like Caroline Manzo at all. I don't like the Housewives. Her energy throws me off. The Atlanta Housewives are back and they're great. Okay. I'll... They're great. Atlanta Housewives are Should great. I watch Beverly Hills? Lisa Rinna is on it. Like, she's legitimately famous. How do I know who Lisa Rinna is? She's like in the, she's like in the celebrity mix. I think That's she's what like they, so I asked that question to my wife. Like, how do I know Lisa Rinna? She's oh, she's the one with the big lips. Yeah. She's That's like, what she said. I was like, she's famous for having big lips. Is that true? She's just in the mix. She's like, she, she's, she's around. Should Julia, I watch? There's one thing I really just don't want to end this podcast without asking you. Okay. Do you have any updates on Chandler Parsons? <laughs> so Dirk Nowitzki moved into the ninth all-time score. No. In the next day. First in international born players. Yeah. So then Chandler, Chandler went to uh, Starbucks the next day. Okay. Ordered a coffee. What name did he get on the cup? He gave his own name, but they gave, he wrote Dirk on it. No. Yeah, they wrote Dirk. And then oh, every, those sneaky baristas. Everyone on the internet's like, oh, the people in Dallas are still are confusing Dirk and Chandler. That's confusing. It's like they're just having fun, like making a joke about Chandler. Yeah. I think that was weird. How did Chandy take it? Great. He did a really funny post about it on Instagram and Facebook. Anything else that happened in Chandy this week? Mm. Is he still having trouble finding his, uh, his place there in the no, offense? He's, he's doing a lot better. He's doing better? Yeah. I mean, last night they blew out the Sixers by 50. It doesn't speak too much, but he's he's playing better. You know what my problem is with Chandy on the court? He's He doesn't move around that much. He just like stands in one, one place. That's a rhetorical question. I was going to answer it. Oh. The tights. Oh, the I leggings. don't like the tights. The leggings are just weird looking. The, they're really bad in white. They're okay in black. They're really bad in white. They're weird looking. They're not great, but you know what? What do they do for you? I don't know. Compression? Should we like tweet at him and ask? Yeah. Tweet, let's, let's tweet at him and ask. <laughs> Okay, we will. This has easily been the snappiest podcast we've had. Thanks for listening. We'll Have be back next weekend. week.